I've had a couple comments on the channel relating to the shape builder tool, specifically that when they try to use it, they can't draw to merge shapes like I do with the cursor. Instead, it works only in a straight line. So I set out to figure out how to change that setting and I found a lot more settings in the shape builder tool that I never knew about. So let's take a look. First and foremost, with the shape builder tool, it's this little icon in your toolbar over here. Kind of looks like a cloud with a cursor running through it. To get to the options of the shape builder tool, all you have to do is double click on that icon and it opens up the shape builder tool options. I didn't know this panel existed and it made me think a lot of the tools in the toolbar have these options. If you double click on the tool, I'll probably make a whole video on each and every different option panel that you can pull up that you may have never thought existed behind the tools that you're using in Illustrator. With the Shape Builder tool, there's all these different options. A lot of times you, you run into very tiny gaps within your, your work, and this may help merge those together uh, so you don't have to manually look at the gaps. The options down here, consider open filled path as closed. Not sure if this is always checkmarked, but I think it's one to consider checkmarking. I'll show you what that means here in a second. Another one here in merge mode, clicking stroke splits the path. That can be an interesting one as well, especially if you're working with a lot of strokes and you're more concerned about the strokes of the path and how they overlap and intersect with shapes than the shapes themselves. You can also select where the color comes from. So I've always thought that the Shape Builder tool just randomly picked the color that you have as your foreground fill color but come to find out, there's an option here. It'll pick that foreground fill color from your color swatches. You can even show a preview on the cursor of what that color is gonna be so you know what your shapes are gonna merge into when they're one shape, what color. You can also select from your artwork. So I'll show you how that actually gives you a little bit more control over which color those shapes bring into each other. This section here is the selection section. I always have it on free form, which means I can just draw through my different uh, artwork and freely merge or um, cut shapes, etc. But some of you might have it on straight line. And I think freeform has to be the default because I never changed this before. But for some reasons, I know some of you have it on straight line. So you could use straight line or you can do freeform. This highlight section just talks about when you're highlighting or hovering over the different parts of your shapes, how it shows you that those exist. And then this other little piece down here, I found kind of interesting. It says press option key, that's alt on PC, to erase shapes or trim lines. While merging or erasing shapes, press the shift key to change to a rectangular marquee selection. I actually didn't know that. I'll show you what that means here in a second. So a couple of these settings we're gonna look at. Uh, the open path or open filled path as closed. We'll look at the artwork selection here. Uh, we can look at freeform and straight line and then this last marquee selection. So when I have shapes created on my artboard, so I'm just gonna make a quick square and then the open versus filled path. Uh, first, I'm gonna just change my color really quick to something like this. Actually, not with that one. We're gonna create a new shape out here with a new color. Uh, we'll go back to our yellows. So we'll hit OK. Now, the open versus uh, the open path versus the fill, all that kind of stuff. If I have my pen tool and I start creating a shape out here, as I can actually close this, it's going to show me the shape that it would create if I did close this. But if this is open, which means these two points are not closed together, I can still utilize this as a shape with the Shape Builder tool. So if I drag this over the top of the other, select both, Shift M is the shortcut key for that Shape Builder tool. Notice how it highlights the different sections. So it can actually see where this would actually be closed um, and it uses the fill that's there. Now, if I had turned that off up here, so consider open filled path as closed, if that's off, now it, it doesn't even see that. Even if I have them both selected, uh, select both, shift M, it just doesn't even register that as a filled path. It'll still use the stroke, so if I bring this stroke over here across, you can see how it will still utilize this stroke here. And actually I need this to come all the way across so we can actually have something to work with here. But now you see how it sees the separate parts here but it doesn't utilize the fill 
as a separate shape. So it just uses the stroke that goes across this square. So that's kind of two different ways that you might utilize. I kind of like the idea of keeping it as consider open field path as closed, only because then um, even if you have some weird paths in your document and they're not closed, you can still utilize the shape, utilize the shape builder tool in the same way if you have a fill there and you didn't even know that it was open, but it still will work the same way. So I kind of like leaving that feature on. Now, as far as the artwork color. So as I sort of slice and dice through this and I'm merging these two pieces together, right now if I let go, these will merge together as yellow. Now the reason they merge together as yellow is because I have artwork selected from the pick color from section in my shape builder tool options. But check this out, if I slice and dice through here and go to the pink section, this will all turn pink. So when you have artwork selected in your shape builder tool options, whatever path or shape that you end up on is the color it's all going to merge together to be. Now I've seen people ask, well, but what if I wanted to keep those colors? In Illustrator, when you have shapes, it is a stroke around the shape and it is a fill color. So if you're merging shapes together, what you're doing is you're getting rid of the idea that there are multiple shapes. There's now just gonna be one shape in whatever merged uh, fill that you've done. And that one shape is gonna have one single color. So if you wanted multiple colors and you wanted to treat something like it was a single shape but you wanted multiple colors in there, those have to be separate fills. They have to be separate shapes. So that's a quick tip for you guys that I know I've seen comments about people that weren't sure why, why do I just have to have one color? Why does it merge to one color? That's why. To have multiple colors, you have to have multiple shapes in that artwork. You can make it look like it's all one merged together, but it's got to be multiple fills all put together. Now, the other section here is down here, there's a little thing called um, a rectangular marquee selection. So while merging or erasing, you can press shift to create a, uh, a marquee selection, which I didn't realize. So if I hit OK and kind of back this up, I've got these two shapes, right? And I can select them both, Shift M, shortcut key for the Shape Builder tool. So I've got all these different pieces. Now I used to just like draw through this whole thing to try to merge different sections together. But if you hold Shift, you can actually create a marquee selection to where you can select all these different parts. I didn't realize you could do that, and it's kind of a nifty little feature, uh, kind of a quick way to just be like, all right, everything within this marquee selection, I wanna merge. And I think that's pretty helpful. It's better in some cases than the draw option where you're trying to draw through all these different little parts. And I think it's also better than if you switched that from freeform to straight line and hit okay. Notice how what the straight line does is instead of being able to draw, it's just a simple straight line. It can be even better than that. And actually, even if you have freeform or straight line selected, you can still hold shift and it's going to change it to the marquee selection tool. Also, also, it's not just for merging. If I'm holding option or alt, that changes that to a minus, which means I'm going to cut through this, right? I can also hold shift while holding that and it's gonna be a marquee selection and I could get rid of all of those pieces within that marquee selection. So let's take one last look at the Shape Builder tool options. I think we've covered most things in here. You can sort of tweak these and play around with them as you like, but that is some of the hidden features of the Shape Builder tool that I didn't even know existed. I knew, there's a little bug in here. I knew that you could double click into uh, into tools and come up with the options for those tools for certain ones, but I really need to click through each one of these and find out what I'm missing that is hidden behind all these different tools in Illustrator. Let me know down below if you have any questions, if I answered something, if I confused you, um, or if you have any comments about how you guys use the Shape Builder tool. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and I'll see you next time.